So we're going to continue with the presentation by Max Skorodinsky, who has worked as a software engineer for over a decade and currently teaches computer science at an alternative public high school as an openly transgender person. He is involved in multiple grassroots efforts to support non-binary and transgender people. And additionally, he is a doctoral candidate in the Critical and Social Cultural Studies in Education program at the University of Oregon. So he is joining us very, very early in his morning uh, for us the afternoon. Uh, his research is focused on democratizing the field of computer science and broadening student participation in computer science education. And to this end, he has taught computer science in a variety of venues focused on empowering and underserved youth. So welcome, Max. I hope you can share your screen so that the floor is yours. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. All right. Um, can you see the slides that green and black slide? Yeah, we see the whole browser. I had this issue yesterday. So um, if you go back and then do uh, command sheet F, if you're in a Mac, I think that should do it. Yes, All right. perfect. Cool. All right, well, uh, thank you for having me. Um, turn my timer on. Um, so uh, I'll just preface this by saying this is my uh, dissertation uh, work. So I'm currently uh, dissertating, um, and the talk today I'll uh, I'll stick to this plan. So I'll introduce the problem space and then uh, the research questions in my dissertation, and then um, chat a little bit about the research design, and then uh, kind of let you know about the data analysis that I'm doing. And the, that part is in progress. Uh, and then talk about uh, some of the findings. Um, yeah, so we'll go. Um, so uh, we all probably have this uh, kind of down, but uh, computer science uh, is an influential and high st status uh, field, uh, has an extensive impact on our lives. And in the US, um, at least in the last uh, decade, uh, longer uh, for sure, but in the last decade, like more prominently, uh, there's a concerted reform movement to um, democratize computer science, uh, the field and uh, computer science education. Um, and this reform targets historically excluded populations such as girls and women. And in this uh, effort, uh, on occasion, LGBTQ, uh, people are mentioned, uh, but uh, they're very rarely the target of the interventions and transgender people are even less so. Uh, so some of the central assumptions of this kind of reform is that underrepresented groups such as girls, students of color, students with disabilities lack access to computer science education. And so the intention is to increase access to computing education in uh, K-12 spaces. So for us, that's kindergarten through 12th grade. It's the uh, before university or college or community college um, and provide CS education that improves outcomes for participation in computing for underrepresented groups. So there's this idea about um, getting more of, of the students who we don't tend to see into computing and also uh, once they're there, what can we do with computer science education that um, encourages them to stay and supports them through maybe continuing onto careers. So uh, this uh, reform in the US is uh, under kind of the, the banner of computer science for all. And under the same banner, uh, many groups have kind of looked at this for all with a bit of suspicion um, and maybe noticing that there is lack. Um, and transgender uh, people uh, also have uh, both been identified as uh, underrepresented groups, but have also looked at this uh, for all as 
um, you know, is this, is this really about us? Um, so just a little uh, background about, you know, uh, who are these uh, people that I'm uh, researching? Um, so uh, they've been identified as a group that's not well supported in computer science. Uh, the numbers, uh, there are a couple of recent studies that have, have estimated uh, half to 1% of the population in the US identify as transgender and gender nonconforming. Uh, in very recent studies, uh, kind of evidence that the numbers are increasing among young people. And it's also uh, kind of true for just uh, kind of outside the binary in sexuality as well. Um, it, when I started doing this uh, research, it was pretty uh, scarce uh, to find anything that explicitly named transgender and gender nonconforming people. Um, sometimes uh, we are kind of lumped into the uh, LGBTQ plus umbrella, uh, but the results for transgender and gender nonconforming people are rarely disaggregated. So people might talk about kind of this large group of people without actually talking about the experience of trans people in any of these um, kinds of interventions. Um, and some of the things I ran into are, so non-binary people might be mentioned uh, as sort of like a, uh, we will also include in them, but the results are rarely actually speak to uh, what uh, participants who identify as uh, gender diverse um, experienced. And um, so in, in, in quantitative studies, uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, most of the time, the options that are offered for gender identity are binary, uh, but when non-binary um, and gender diverse options are offered, uh, often the uh, results are, are tossed because the N is so small. Uh, so even when uh, there's some kind of uh, acknowledgement and allowance, um, there's rarely kind of handling the results with any kind of uh, focus and attention. So um, that's kind of the uh, motivation for my study. I mean, it's also like pretty personal because my background is in computing. I spent years in computing education um, and I spent years then working in computing and I now teach computing. So um, these have like a very personal um, feel for me as well. Uh, so uh, the problem space kind of for me is, is twofold. Uh, there is the experience of uh, transgender and gender nonconforming people uh, th that is lacking. So just, just uh, the stories of the people living in, in these spaces, uh, but also uh, simultaneously, uh, I'm very aware of um, the reform efforts to encourage more girls and women in computing. And um, those efforts often are predominantly based on gender theorized as binary, if a gender theory is at all pre presented. So I think more often that is just taken for granted. Um, and uh, uh, often also the, um, this kind of reform is grounded in and reinscribes gender essentialism. So these questions of what do girls like, um, how do they uh, think about computing kind of assumes a stable girl. And, um, this, this kind of in itself erases and excludes gender experiences outside the binary. So it's very hard to talk about an existence of, of, of something outside kind of how we structure the problem and then structure how we're gonna um, research the problem. Um, yeah, so I think those are the two things I'm trying to kind of wrap my arms around in my dissertation or like, there are these people and they have these experiences and in some ways these experiences butt up against the way we've structured an intervention for a whole group of people. And while I um, acknowledge and, and support that it's really uh, imperative that we encourage women and girls in computing, I feel like there's somewhere in this conversation we have to keep having and this kind of research um, thinking that we have to keep doing that, that acknowledges both of these things. 
so my research question for the dissertation was what are the salient experiences with respect to gender in uh, computer science education and employment for gender diverse folks? Um, just want to acknowledge, I use a lot of different terms for gender diversity, um, and I, it, it's intentional because uh, the community uses many different terms. Uh, so I'm just trying to kind of keep that, that alive, uh, that there's not like something we've all settled on that we all have like said is our flag. Um, so you'll notice there's a lot of different phrases. Um, so the second question is, in what way is the interplay of expansive gender and other identity factors such as race, ethnicity, disability, sexuality, significant in CS education and employment. And how can these experiences inform computing related education research design methodology and computer science education efforts? I'm trying to ask some questions, but also see if the people I'm talking to can offer some places for us to go because they're also rarely centered as the producers of solutions. They're often the, the studied subjects. Uh, so research design, I did uh, a survey uh, and then some interviews and focus groups and they're all kind of intertwined. The surveys asked uh, some demographics, but also about belongingness in computing and about intersectional identity. And then I pulled my participants from uh, those who were surveyed who agreed to uh, be interviewed, but I targeted uh, who I interviewed based on intersectional identities. Uh, so then the interviews were uh, semi-structured um, and were pulled from the survey. And then from the people who were interviewed, I also tapped people um, to, to then participate in a focus group. And it was one focus group. Uh, and it was really based on kind of thinking about um, a project that they would design um, or how they would, would see something that would sort of make them feel included in, uh, in an intervention. Uh, so the interviews, uh, I'll, I'll just highlight, there were only a couple, couple of questions about role modeling, but role modeling definitely came up in my research. Uh, and so probably the most salient one was, was, did you have any mentors during your schooling employment, um, uh, specifically in computer science? Uh, and also there was, a, there was a question about, do you recall any people who inspired you or pulled you into computing? So those are probably the most kind of relevant. Um, Oh, in, in, in the focus group, I already explained, okay. <laughs> so the findings are, uh, the participants reported a consistent lack of representation, role models and mentors. And it was across uh, all the ones I interviewed. Uh, and they reported not being exposed to transgender people, historical or current during any part of their education. Older participants uh, talked about uh, finding other transgender people in the field on their own and making community. So it was really important for them to see other people and be in contact with other people who um, shared some of their identity. One participant talked about, oh, younger participants talked about feeling alone in their CS uh, program. So I uh, uh, interviewed quite a few uh, university students and that was very consistent. Um, one participant talked about finding information about Alan Turing in the library very early on uh, when, when they were a young person. Um, and, and even just discovering this historical figure who was not uh, transgender or gender not conforming, but was out of sort of the, the normative box. Uh, even that helped them uh, and inspired them um, to persist in computing. Uh, participants spoke about the impact of intersectionality and how this adds complexity and layers uh, to the role, uh, to the need of uh, role models and, and being understood and supported. Uh, so here's a quote that kind of, for me, summarizes many, many things. So uh, the first person that really impacted me was actually on my first day of the job at some place. I had I just gone through my month long of training and so it was my first day on the floor and I remember walking down what felt like the longest hallway ever to the other end to get to my desk but as I'm walking down this hallway and passing a manager's office and I remember there one female manager on that whole hall hallway and she must have seen me walk by and again context pre-transition I was very obviously butch looking and as I walked past her door she walked out the door and said hey she saw me pass and then came on to get me, 
waved at me and said, oh, hi. She introduced herself. She's like, come in the first day, right? And I said, yes, she was a director. She wasn't just a manager. She was actually a director. She was a director of technical support and she was a lesbian. And so on my first day, I saw a queer woman in a position of power who oversaw multiple men. So what that did for me, it showed me that there's not a glass ceiling because of your gender or your sexuality here. That's not actually true. There were plenty, but it has shaded my perception of that entire company and of the 13 and a half years that I worked there, it absolutely came into play every day because I walked in with a level of confidence and assuredness that I could do the thing that I wanted to do. So it kind of speaks to many things, but one of the things is that this person found a role model who's not just like them. Um, they're not a transgender person, but they're kind of out of that box um, and, and allow them to sort of see uh, possibilities for themselves. So I'll show you one more thing really quickly because we're out of time um, or I am out of time. <laughs> uh, but the, the, the people who were in the focus group, I introduced them to historical uh, sort of role models that uh, girls often get introduced to in interventions. So these are kind of the classic Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper. And then I introduced them to um, transgender people who are also uh, have had quite an impact on computing. Uh, you'll see Lynn Conway and a few others. Uh, they're rarely brought in uh, into that gallery of uh, even impactful women. Uh, and then the participants designed their own intervention. Um, this, is just, this is a poster they came up with. So it's called Queer Coding. And you can briefly look at this. I'm not going to, um, I, I can talk about it in a QA uh, more. Uh, if you'd like. But the thing to note is that they were really um, insistent that the thing that they wanted to participate was like explicitly for them, that they, they explicitly included them and then explicitly had support for that. So, um, you know, having transgender uh, mentors, this is a queer coding space. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I can speak more to that, but I think it, it really expresses their sense of lack of support and their sense of lack of this explicitness support for them. Um, and then there was another uh, poster that was produced and it was more about uh, topics that would be of interest to queer people. And so again, it was like asking for this explicit, like we want to be seen as also the, the people who are relevant in the kind of problems that we address. Anyway, that's what I got. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Max, for a very interesting presentation and for doing research on a topic that is so relevant and so so needed.